Well, welcome back to the channel. On the ride home from work today, I got caught in a little rain, bound to happen. But I realized quickly, I'm in desperate need of a new front tire. So how do you know when your tires really need to be replaced? Well, tires all come with wear markers. And you'll usually find a marker on the side that will tell you where they are. But I've tried to highlight this one here. So you'll find little pieces of rubber slats in the tread. And the point is, is when your tire wears down to the point it's touching the slat, you're in need of a new tire. And you can see here that I'm actually rubbing down the wear marker. So it's definitely time for a new tire. So when you're going to replace a tire in a Harley Davidson, you need to figure out the size and dimensions of the tire. You can look on the sidewall of the tire to determine this, but if you're looking for that OEM tire, a good option is to search the Harley Davidson website. They provide a nice tool that search, lets you search OEM parts, but also get the diagrams of how they go together. Let's take a look. All right, so we're here on the main page of the Harley Davidson website. We're gonna go to parts. From there, we'll click on this new OEM service parts. All right, from here, uh, we can search for uh, what we're looking for. And we get the year and then the model. So we'll pick CVO and then it's important to pick the right CVO here because the tire sizes are different. So we'll go with Roguelide. And then from here, you get the major categories of parts, but they give you this nice search. So if, we, if we just type tire here, we'll enter that. We get wheel front and wheel rear. So we're looking for the front this time. Let's take a look. And here are all the parts associated with this section of the bike. So you get all of the part numbers and the prices. And then you can sometimes purchase these through the online store or sometimes you can go to the dealer. But one of the cool things is this diagram, right? So this is a complete diagram of how the parts go together. It doesn't give you the torque specs and et cetera. You really need the service manual. Anyone working on their bike would recommend you have a service manual. But I can tell you in a pinch, this is really great because not all these pictures are in that service manual. And this shows you exactly how parts go together. So you can zoom in and you can look around and you can see how the order of which parts go together. And when you take your tire off, uh, all kinds of parts are gonna fall down on the ground and you may lose track of what goes where. And this is a great reference of how to put stuff back together. So if we take a look at this, look at this diagram, number 26 is the front tire itself. So on the right, right hand side here, we'll look through and it gives us a reference number and we're looking for 26. So let's keep going. Keep going almost, 25, 26. All right, so if you look at this here, it says tire FR for front, and then it's 13060B21. That is the size and dimension of the tire. So if you're shopping around for an aftermarket tire or calling around for dealers, that is the size you're looking for. If you're talking to a Harley dealer, you actually have the part number there of 431, four zeros and an eight. That's the part number they're looking for when you call. So you can save them a lot of time by giving them the part number. And you can also see what the price is, $209.95. So that's what you're looking for from the dealer when they quote you. Now, when you, uh, when you go take your bike to get it installed, there is labor involved. All right, so when you take your uh, bike to a dealer to get a new tire, they're gonna charge you labor. Whether you go to a, a, a non-Harley-Davidson dealer or a true Harley-Davidson dealer, you're gonna pay that hourly rate. So one good way to save money is to take that tire off the bike yourself and then drive it over in a cage uh, and get the tire uh, rubber replaced. That will save you quite a bit of labor time. Now, not every dealer will support this. Some dealers will claim that they can't do that type of uh, work because it is of insurance liability and they won't let you just bring the tire and they want you to bring the whole bike in. I've been quoted above above 450 for this, near $500, depending on the rear tires more involved in the front. 
But if you opt to just take that, that tire in off the bike and the dealer's willing to do it, you're gonna pay the minimum labor generally to do that. And it's usually between, you know, between I've been quite as low as $30, $50 to change a tire if you bring it in. So it's a big savings if you if you go this route. I know many people are intimidated to work on their bikes. They're concerned about the safety of their own skills and, and doing damage to the bike or themselves. So I get that, but I can tell you many of these procedures are very simple. And with a little basic knowledge, and of course YouTube, you can get some good advice and you can successfully do this yourself and save a significant amount of money. So today I'm gonna to show you the basics of how I take a tire off. You may pick up a few tips from me, uh, but I'll give you the basic information. If you're knowledgeable in this area, I do encourage you to watch because I may show you something that's useful to you. But if I'm missing something, I encourage you in the comments to help me out. Put in the details that I'm missing and we'll, we'll all together help this community replace their own tires with a big savings in reward. All right, so get a tire off a motorcycle, you're gonna need a lift. Otherwise, how would you get the tire off? So this is my uh, Craftsman lift that I bought many years ago. And frankly, I would avoid this style of lift. You really are looking for the one with the foot pump. So I used to have a Craftsman red uh, lift that had the foot pump, and it was much more stable. And this lift has one major flaw. You actually use the handle there to, re to uh, lower the bike after you have it lifted. You twist that uh, handle and it'll lower the bike. It has a tendency just to let the bike fall out of the sky. And it's rather dramatic and a little intimidating as it falls down really quickly. And you have to be so careful twisting that handle so that you lower it slowly. And frankly, the foot pump one is much less dramatic and a lot more stable. So I would recommend that and it costs less. But I bought this one because I had a chopper for a little while. It was so low to the ground and my original Craftsman Red foot pump lift wouldn't, wouldn't uh, fit underneath it. So that's why I ended up with this one. But I really encourage you to uh, avoid it. So if you go to Harbor Freight, you'll find this style lift, but you'll also find that older foot, uh, foot pump version. That's the one to go to. But don't be intimidated. Uh, you'll pay for this lift on your first uh, use of it, guaranteed. And you'll use it over time, even for detailing the bike. It comes quite in handy. So I encourage you to invest and give it a go and don't be intimidated. All right, so we're under the bike here and we slid the lift under. And what we're looking for is this support brace right here. It goes across underneath the transmission. That is a good place to uh, uh, position your lift. Um, and we want us, uh, to pay attention to which side we're placing on based on where the work is being done. So in this case, we're gonna remove the front tire. When we do that, that's gonna remove a lot of weight from the front of the bike and the bike is wanna, gonna wanna shift to the back tire of the bike. So the, the weight's gonna all shift to the back. So we're gonna place this towards the back of this brace so that we have a little more support as we remove that tire. So we'll place the lift and then you start cranking your lift and then once it touches, you're gonna stand up and grab the handlebar and keep pumping until the bike falls on to the lift. So this part will come down lay flat on the lift. You wanna make sure that you can see some of the rubber on this side and some of the rubber on the other side uh, on both sides of the bike uh, so that you have good contact with the rubber surface. And then you just pump it up and since we're gonna be replacing the tire, you're gonna to wanna to pump it fairly high so that we can get the tire off from under the fender. All right, so now we're ready to lift the bike. So we're gonna start pumping the handle. If you've got the foot version, you'll step on it and the bike is gonna to lean towards you. So now the bike is securely on the surface of the lift. We wanna make sure that we have rubber exposed on this side of the frame and that side of the frame, as well as the other side. So we're good here, we're gonna just start pumping. So you gotta remember, we set the uh, lift to be more towards the rear of the bike. So the rear of the bike is gonna lift up way ahead of the front, but we're gonna keep going. You'll hear your uh, lift click as it goes through its different safety points. So that way if the hydraulic jack failed, it would lock into place at that level. And we're really gonna go 
really to the maximum of the lift, which is about right there. I think we can get a little more out of it. And then we'll give us a little additional room to get that front tire off. Okay, so now we've got the bike in the air. We want to secure it with some straps. We're going to be working on it. We're going to be uh, pulling some bolts off. So it's a good idea to, at this point, strap it down. And when we release that front tire, we're going to release a lot of weight so the straps will be important. Let's do that next. All right, so we're going to put one strap on the rear of the bike, securing it to the uh, lift, and then we'll go around the other side and do one to the front. I have these uh, tie straps uh, to help protect the finish, but you can just, you know, loop your, uh, your standard tie strap around. We'll go ahead and use these since we've got them. So I'm going to loop around the rear saddlebag guard, and then we'll uh, feed our, our strap through. So we'll go through that. And then we're just going to secure it to the uh, bottom of the lift here across the, the wheels there. And we'll secure the other side. And then we're going to just ratchet it up. We want to be careful because we don't need a, a lot of tension here as the bike is really just loose um, uh, without the front attached. So we're just looking to get a little tension and then we'll get one on the front and then we'll equally torque them down until we have good tension on both. Okay, on the front, we're going to use the crash bar. But one thing you got to think, uh, think about when you're putting on tie straps, if, if you start it here at the top of the crash bar and you start putting tension on it, at some point it might just slide down all of a sudden, releasing a whole bunch of tension and, and then the bike would be off balance. So I'm going to go around this uh, foot peg here because it's secure and in place. So we'll loop around that. Not a tremendous amount of tension here. So you don't need, about, need to worry about ripping your foot peg off. We're just looking to stabilize the bike as we work on it to reduce the wobble of it shifting from the front to the back on the lift. So we'll, uh, we'll secure it here and then we'll go down to the lift, find a secure spot to put the other end of the hook and then we'll remove all the tension here. Let's get that started we'll open it up. And we'll pull this through, get some of the slack out. There we go. Okay, and then we'll engage the clicking mechanism here and start to winch it down. All right, so now we've got tension on both sides. Uh, we'll. Uh, We'll stop here. If you want, you can go back and put a little more tension on the back. You want to kind of inch them down a little bit equally. You don't need a ton of force here. You're just looking to stabilize the bike on the lift to reduce the movement from the back and the front. So now we're start, ready to start removing the wheel. First of all, we've got to get these axle nut covers off. So I've got a uh, 3 32nd, and underneath you're going to find a matching uh, screw there. You're just going to rotate it a few times. That'll break it loose, and off it comes. We're ready to remove our axle nut. I've got a 15 16 six-point socket with a medium-sized breaker bar. We'll place that on here, and we'll just give her a little torque. So put your knees on the wheel if you want. Watch your fender, little knees to help it hold place, and give it a go. All right. If your axle nut will not come loose, you can put a screwdriver through the hole on the other side of the axle nut and then get in front of it and use both to give yourself a little additional torque. And, that, and sticking the screwdriver through that hole will prevent it from spinning. Right, so on the other side, we have a pinch bolt that's holding this axle nut in. So we've got to loosen that so that we can then slide the axle out. I've got a, uh, a number nine hex head here. Uh, these are really handy, right? Go to your uh, your favorite big box store, the Colbot brand or the Husky brand, and get yourself the uh, metric and standard set of these. You'll need them. All right, so we'll place this in here. The common tip is if there's any big movement with the tool in the hole, you've got the wrong size. 
and applying pressure we'll strip it so we've got a good snug fit here so we'll just give her a good crank and there we go all right so now she's loose so we'll loosen that up a little bit that'll relieve the uh, pressure on this pinch bolt and allow the axle to slide out before we get the axle off and remove the tire, we are going to have to pull both brake collars off on both sides to allow room for the rim to clear when it comes off. There are two 10 millimeter bolts right here, a 12 point, important. Don't try to put a six point uh, socket on here. And these two will remove uh, the caliper. The caliper is attached by a brake line, but also there's an ABS sensor here that runs through the axle. So the ABS sensor is just clipped in here. You can just pop it out. Oops, there goes one of the clips. I'll pop this uh, third one out. Now that cord is loose. So that will stay uh, attached when, when we pull the caliper off. So you're gonna end up with this big heavy caliper attached to this brake line. This brake line is pretty strong and it can hold the weight of the caliper, uh, but uh, not a great idea just to let it dangle and uh, you got a lot of painted parts here. So we're gonna use a, a bag. This is just a parts bag that I had laying around. The Crown uh, Royal bags uh, work well here and are, are pretty popular for this uh, purpose because they got a little cord and you can hang them around here, but I'm not a Crown Royal drinker, so I don't have that handy. So we're gonna go with this. So we're gonna do this uh, here and then we'll uh, do the other side and we'll be able to remove the axle. All right, so 12.10 millimeter. And we'll give that a pop there, and we'll go up the top. Give that a pop there, and they should come out fairly easy. They're not overly torqued down. Loosen them up here a little bit with the tool. Okay, so I think we can probably go after them by hand here. They're pretty long. All right, and this is the ABS sensor, so we're gonna pay attention to that. We'll just keep turning. All right, so this is the ABS mount there, this part right here, and you can see it's attached to that cord. So that's gonna stay behind because it goes through the axle. It'll come loose when we slide the axle. So if we pull back a little bit here, and we go down a little, clear the fender, your caliper will come out. And this is a great time to inspect your uh, brake pads and see what kind of wear you have here. I'm about halfway, I think, if I look at these marks here, uh, about halfway. You can take these uh, pins out at this time and, and clean them off. It's a great time to service your brakes when you got your wheel off. All right, so right now we're gonna cover this with a bag. A t-shirt works well as, as well, I've done that. Just slide in a t-shirt through the armhole or whatever. You just kind of want to cover it. And then you, you want to be careful. You, are, you do have joints here. You don't want to overly uh, torque them or try to or bend them. But if you're careful here, you can, you can slide this around the crash bar and just kind of snuggle it in between the footboard and the crash bar. If you want, use a bungee uh, strap and strap it around if you're concerned about moving around. We won't be really moving this section of the bike, so it should be stable there. Okay, at this point, we're uh, ready to remove the axle. So I placed this mat underneath the tire, uh, covering both sides of it, because uh, when we remove this axle, some parts are going to fall out, uh, mainly the dust cover, and there's uh, spacers on each side. So it's, it's kind of tough to catch them. Sometimes you can do it, but if you should drop one, you got the mat there just to prevent any unnecessary ding. All right, so we're gonna remove the uh, axle out the rest of the way. Should come off freely at this point. There's a washer that goes along with it. Again, that parts diagram in the Harley-Davidson parts manual there uh, will help us as to what order go things go back together. But if you keep things together as you take them off, it makes it easier. All right, so this is gonna be fairly snug um, because we have all the way of the tire hanging on it. So one thing you can do is put your foot underneath it, just try to eliminate a little of that, and then a good rubber mount with a few soft taps should make it move. All right.
right, so now we've got it started. We'll go to the other side and pull it through. Okay, with both calipers out of the way and our axle nut removed and we, we started the axle sliding over, we're ready to pull it out from this side. When we do that, the ABS sensor is going to come loose, the dust cover and the spacer is going to come out. And then on this side, we have another dust cover and a spacer that's going to come out. So I got the mat down, as we talked about, so they can just fall. If you're uh, coordinating enough, which I'm not, you might be able to catch them and avoid all that. Anyway, it should come out fairly easily. Again, we're going to put our foot underneath to relieve a little of the tension of the wheel hanging there. And you're just going to kind of twist and pull as you go. And the tire is heavy, so it's going to just fall. So you're going to have to eventually get a hand on the tire. So again, it'd be great to have an extra pair of hands, which we never do. So we're going to keep going here. You can see that's, that uh, ABS sensor is wanting to come loose. And so we'll eventually slide that out. There it is. Okay. So we'll just let that dangle. It's okay. All right. And then we're going to keep going. I'm going to get a good handle on the wheel here. Just grab as you go. All right. We're going to keep twisting and pulling. And if it's too hard, put a little pressure underneath it and your axle comes out. It's very greasy. It's got uh, anti-seize all over it. Okay, so we're going to grab this uh, desk guard and spacer on the right side. Set that aside. And our wheel is now loose. And if we did everything correctly, it's going to come down without anything grabbing. And it's going to slide right out. So there we go. Wheel is off the bike. Nothing fell over or anything, so that's a good sign. So tomorrow I'm going to take it to the dealer and we'll get a new set of rubber on it and then put it back on. So we got our tire back and it's amazing when you live with your motorcycle and live with those tires, you don't just don't realize how little tread you have left. But take a look at the new tread. Gonna improve the ride significantly. Let's get it back on the bike. So one tip I wanted to give you before we uh, get the tire back on the bike, when you have your bike on a lift and you're gonna be working on it for a while or uh, you're gonna be uh, handling some serious torque, one little trick is take a scissor jack out of the back of your car, the spare tire uh, jack, and place it underneath the tire of the opposite side you're working on to completely stabilize the bike on the lift. So before you put the tire back on the bike, you want to make sure you have it in the right direction. Don't just assume that the technician mounted it the correct way. Look for the arrow. So if you look on the side of the tire, you'll see the arrow that indicates forward rotation. That should be going forward when you mount it on the bike. We are gonna to wanna to know a couple torque values. I tell you the Bible, the source of torque values is the Harley-Davidson Touring Mo uh, Models Manual. Uh, always recommend you buy a service manual when you buy your Harley-Davidson. But you can also now get them digital uh, via the Harley-Davidson website. And usually it's a sub subscription, so you could rent the manual for the project you're doing and then, uh, and then uh, just pay for that period of time. So I think that's a great option. It's something I've not used before. So in our uh, 2023 CVO Road Glide, I intend to use that instead of actually purchasing the paper manual. I think the digital manual is the way to go uh, for sure. You know, you get the most current information and you don't get your dirty fingerprints all over the pages. All right, so in the manual, there's actually a section that has fastener torque values. And this is all the torque values for every fastener on the bike. The key is you got to know what it's called. So again, that uh, parts diagram that we showed earlier in the video is a great source of what the names of these are. So these are alphabetical. So we can see we got A's and B's here. And if we look, uh, the brake caliper front 
mounting screws are 28 to 38 foot pounds. So we're going to need that number, 28 to 38 foot pounds. Most mechanics will shoot for the middle. I think that's just human nature to shoot for the middle, but anywhere within this range will work. So that's our front caliper uh, number. And then for our pinch screws and the axle nut, we're going to look under front. So if we look for FR, let's go one more page. All right, so we got fork, but I bet if we keep looking, here we go. So we got the uh, front axle pinch screw, 18 to 22 foot pounds. And then the front axle nut, 70 to 75 foot pounds. So when you're purchasing torque, torque wrenches, my guess is in the foot pound range, you're going to need the lower range and the upper range. And I don't care if you buy a cheap one on Amazon or Harbor Freight, at least it's going to get you close. And if you put it in the middle of the range, you're going to be in, in good shape. So buy the torque wrenches. Do not attempt to, oh, this is what it felt like when I loosened it. This is what I'm going to do when I tighten it. That is the biggest mistake I think you can make. Buy the torque wrenches. You will use them for the life of your motorcycling journey and maybe in a couple other places, but uh, it's a well worth investment. And I don't think you need to spend a lot of money. I think it's okay to buy the cheaper ones, shoot for the middle, you're gonna be close uh, to the range. And that's all we're shooting for here. So we got our, uh, our uh, measurements here. So I think now we're ready to put them on the bike. Let's get to it. All right, so the axle is coated with anti-seize. And uh, you can see here, it's still fairly well coated. There's a couple spots that have rubbed off uh, either over time or when I removed it. So we're gonna just uh, fill in those empty spots before we put it back on the bike. And you're using just standard anti-seize. Right, so this is the tricky part. We gotta be able to feed the axle through, through the spacer, then through the tire and then through the uh, spacer and ABS sensor on this side and through the other side of the axle. Um, on the rear tire, I always use a, that scissor jack. So I actually crank and raise the tire up and then you can feed it right through. I think another option here would be to lower the bike so where it's, it lines better here. But uh, we're just gonna muscle it here and see what happens. Um, if not, we'll lower the bike. Let's see how it goes here. So I'm just gonna, Line this up, and then we've got to get the spacer, the spacer here, I don't know if you can see that, we've got to get that in alignment, and then we'll feed the axle through and see if we can keep all pieces together. This will be interesting. Let's give it a go. We're just gonna put this tire right in my lap. I'm gonna use my knees then to raise and lower it. So we'll put the, uh, the spacer in place, okay? And then we'll grab the uh, axle on the other side, feed it through. Okay, it should go fairly easy. If you're fighting it, fighting it, then you've got an alignment issue. So just wiggle around. Okay, so we're all the way through. We're gonna grab our ABS sensor and its bearing. We'll paste that in the right direction. See if we can feed that in here, it's, it's tight. Give a little more room here. There we go. Okay, so we're through the spacer. Now I'm just using my knees, wiggling around and bingo. There we go. The wheel is back on. So now we just gotta put the nut on and the uh, brake calipers. And uh, boy, we're almost there. Okay, we're ready to torque the axle nut here. Uh, we're going to torque it to 72 foot-pounds. I got my uh, 15 16 uh, six-point socket on here. The one thing to note is the ABS sensor. So this is the mount, but here's the actual sensor. And you can see it rotates around freely because the axle nut is tight, not tightened. So what you want to do is move it all the way forward till it contacts uh, the tube. And then you want to back it off just a hair as you tighten it. So we'll, uh, we'll hold that as we tighten it. Again, you can use your screwdriver on the other side if you need to, 
to hold the axle in place while you torque it down. So I'll place the torque nut, the torque wrench on here. We'll get it kind of started. So we'll get it where it's snug. Okay, we can still move that uh, ABS sensor a little bit, but it's pretty stiff. So I'm going to touch, and then I'm going to go just a hair off. I mean, just a slight movement off of it touching. We're going to put our screwdriver in, and then we're going to begin to torque. All right. So this is quite a bit of torque, 72 foot-pounds. So I got my knee on the tire, and we're going to put a little pressure with the knee and then a little muscle. I think one more. Let's see. There it is. There's the first click. Now, most guys like to hear two clicks. I think it's just a satisfying sound, which is why we do it twice, but really not required. All right. Now we're ready for the pinch screw. So the pinch screw had no Loctite on it from the factory. There's no remaining Loctite. So I'm a firm believer if they don't put Loctite on it, I'm not going to. Many people choose to put a blue Loctite on it at this point. That is your choice. I'm just following. If, if it was good enough for uh, the factory, I'm just going to leave it without Loctite. So we'll uh, get the pinch screw started here. We'll run it in by hand. It's always good if a bolt runs in smoothly by hand. That tells you you're not, you're not cross-threaded. It's uh, going in smoothly. So I always run my bolts in by hand. Uh, never use an impact uh, wrench or anything when you're, uh, when you're uh, putting bolts in. It should go in smoothly by hand. I'll take our, uh, my little handy Husky uh, multi-tool here and we'll run it in with that until it gets snug. And then we'll move to a torque wrench. So this is um, a digital torque wrench. And it's uh, my lower foot pound range, which you use most often. And mine, my Craftsman finally failed over many years and I decided to go uh, digital. So I got this one off Amazon, it's gear wrench, kind of in the middle of the range. So 20 foot pounds, we're gonna uh, run that in. Okay, so it's showing me on the display. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So there we go. We are now uh, 20 foot pounds with the uh, pinch bolt. And uh, we are there. We just got to put the brake calipers on. Let's go for it. On this side, we got to be concerned about the ABS carrier. So the ABS sensor carrier is going to go on the outside of the fork. It fits right in, and the caliper is then going to bolt over that. Get our caliper out of its cover. Okay, we'll slide the caliper on between the two brake pads. Get it aligned, and we'll hold our ABS sensor. So we're going to run these uh, caliper bolts in by hand. Again, everything should go smoothly. You should have no resistance. If you do, you've got it not aligned correctly. So just twist that in by hand, both of them. I'm holding the caliper, putting a little pressure on there just to get it to go in smoothly. It shouldn't resist you too much. Should be pretty easy to spin these in. If not, take it all out and take another look at it. Okay, both are finger tight. Our ABS sensor uh, is in place here. Uh, the ABS sensor on the other, uh, no, down below here is just off the, uh, the, um, of the uh, fork tube. So I think we're in a good alignment, no kinks or anything. So we can uh, thread this wire back into its little clips here. There we go. It all looks good. You can spread these around. I like to spread them out kind of equally. You want it um, to hold that ABS sensor close to the brake caliper. All right, so again, we'll torque these down. We're going for 32 foot pounds, 12.10 millimeter socket. So we got the bottom one snug. We'll go to the top. 
And I'm watching the signal here. Let's see, there's the, the screen here. Let's see, we got 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 30, 31, 32. Go back to the bottom one. 32. Check the top one. Make sure nothing change. 32. These axle nut covers have a set screw underneath. There's also, I noticed on this one, an extra hole here. So that, I wonder if that is for uh, drainage. Because the set screw is only on one of them, and then uh, this one's empty. I wonder if that's drainage to prevent rust. It takes very little torque to hold these on. I know it's terrifying. You think they're gonna just pop off the bike. I've never had one fall off, but you don't need a lot of torque on these to hold them on. So for cosmetic reasons, you'll try to put this in the downward position and then just snug it up. So we'll look at that here, it's right here. You want it to go on a flat surface, ideally. So we'll put that in there, we'll face it down, give her a little uh, turn or two. You're gonna feel it contact. Give it a good push inward. A little tricky with this tool, it's not the ideal tool. Okay, so once it gets pretty snug here, bend it up to give yourself a little extra. And it's not a big hole, so you, you, you can see it's just all bending and flexing. But that's really it. And that sucker is on there. And I know it's nerve wracking, but I've never had one fall off. Okay, so whenever you've been messing with your brakes, your brake uh, lever is likely to be really, uh, let's say soft. It'll uh, be really uh, no, no tension behind it because you've had those two parts separated. Really good idea to give it a bunch of squeezes, get some firm, firmness in it, spin your wheel and give it a give it a squeeze and make sure your brake is good before you hop on the bike and go because it'll be a little shocking when you squeeze that for the first time and it goes all the way into the hand grip so always exercise that brake anytime you've had the the rotor and the uh, brake caliper separated put down our axle light covers back on now it's time to lower the bike so one thing i learned early on is you do not want these straps attach or with tension when you lower the bike because it's going to lower and so these may get tighter and actually pull the bike in a, in a certain direction you, you do not want that so we're going to loosen these up okay get some tension in them you can actually just remove them if you like at this point just watch the bike as you remove them if it starts to move a bunch you are not balanced so you need to Get balanced before you remove this. Remove the other side. Okay, watching for any movement in the bike. Looks good. All these lifts have a safety mechanism and you have to lift that out of the way. And if it won't go, you got to put a little tension on it to get it to lift. Now I warned you with this lift, if you just loosen this sucker, this bike is gonna fall out of the sky. So we're gonna loosen it very carefully. We're gonna make sure our kickstand is down and in the lock, you know, where it'll align with the lock position. And we're gonna slowly release it, keeping one hand on the bike at all times. You can see it's pretty quick. Lean, lean her over. Release that all the way. And we replaced our front tire. All right, well, we successfully changed the wheel of our CVO Rug Glide, and uh, we saved ourselves some cash. About 200 bucks, high end of the quote, 250 bucks. That means something. If you're not currently working on your bike, I encourage you to get out there and do so. The knowledge you'll gain uh, will serve you well. If you're traveling to Sturgis in the middle of nowhere and you hear a weird noise, uh, you'll have some knowledge to apply in that moment. There's a lot of resources out there, including this video. 
So don't be intimidated. Get out there and work on your bike. One last tip in this video, torque wrenches, the click type. When you store them, it's important to remove all the tension on the torque wrench. If you leave a torque wrench with tension on it, it's gonna mess with the accuracy over time. So make sure you loosen it when you store it. I really wanna thank you for your support and watching this video. All the subscribers and great comments has been outstanding. I really enjoyed sharing this information with you. Get out there, work on your bike. It's just as rewarding as riding it. Until next time, in the friction zone.